Hey, this is David with Haggerty and our Redline Rebuilds. Last time we talked about bore and stroke and how we were taking our four liter and making it a 4.6 liter. And I also alluded to the fact that we needed to understand what compression ratio is and how that's going to be with our new setup. And also in the comments, that's been a very big topic as well. So my goal with this engine is to run on pump gas. Now, granted, pump gas in some people's mind is out to 93, or if you have the ability to get 110, that's also at the pump. But we're talking about 87 octane, so kind of the cheapest we can get. With that, I like to be in the nine to nine and a half compression ratio numbers to be able to utilize 87. With that being said, we're gonna walk through and show you how to measure it. Now, compression ratio in very simple terms is the volume from the cylinder head down to the top of the piston at bottom dead center of stroke. So all the way down and then divide that by the volume that's left when you go to top dead center. Very simple. First thing I'm going to measure is my combustion chamber. I have a spark plug in here. I have my valves in here and I'm going to use this piece of plexiglass to seal everything off along with some grease underneath it. And then I'm going to use my burette with Actually, I have some antifreeze in here so I can see it real well and it won't rust my cylinders. I'm gonna bring that up in here and the amount of fluid that's taken out of the barrette will uh, tell me what my volume is. All right, so this chamber measures 59 cc. So that's the first number to record. Oh, this next one, now you gotta use math. So the next thing to measure is your head gasket. You have your compressed height, and then of course your diameter, because you have that little bit of uh, volume that's in there to add. Just simply come in here and, whoops, get a number. Basically we're four inch. So that is going to be uh, pi over four D squared times, I'll call it your compressed height or distance. That's that area. So we have four inches squared pi four times. Now the compressed gasket, this is gonna measure at what? measuring loosely at 55. So this is gonna compress by five. So we're gonna be at a, this particular gasket is gonna be 50 thousandths. That will give me the volume for the gasket, okay? Now, my next number is relative to the, we'll start with the cylinder. Now, what I'm going to do calculation wise I'm gonna calculate my volume from the top of the deck surface with the piston all the way down. I'll take a measurement to the top of the piston. That's gonna give my total volume available within the cylinder. Obviously, I would need to add the volume because of this dish, there's extra volume in here. But let me get that assembled first and then we'll go through and measure that. All right, so we have our crankshaft in, our rod and piston assembly in. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna measure from the deck surface here down to the top ridge of the piston. That's gonna give me that cylinder volume. So 
3.935 our 3.935 and we know that our bore is 3.905 because we're 30 over using the same equation that will give us our cylinder volume or total volume of the cylinder now the issue with using that number purely our piston a does not come flush to the top and it has a dish so um, if it was a flat top piston you can come in here and just measure our distance so one of the things we were talking about last time is we should be about 25 thousandths in the hole we're about 32 so we're a little bit off but what I really need to do here is I need to measure the dish volume now granted my piston does come with a number and tells me that that cc of a dish should be at 27 and a half. I like to verify that. There's a couple ways to do this. Because we have a, call it a flat piston with just a dish, we could take our plate, set it on top of that piston and fill it just like this. But if you happen to be using a domed piston where it comes up, obviously the flat plate is not going to work very well. So what you do is you take that piston, put it in the cylinder, take it down a distance, a known distance. You calculate out what that known volume is because you have the bore diameter and you have the distance it's down. Then you fill it full of, uh, in our case, coolant. Measure and then take that number that you filled in and subtract that. That gives you your dome in some cases or your dish in other cases. So now my top edge is exactly a half inch down. So I'll use the same formula as far as volume is concerned. The only difference is, is I have 3.905 and then I have 0.5 as far as my depth is concerned and then what I'll do is take my volume that I pour in there and subtract that amount of cc from there. Actually add it because it's bigger but we'll figure that out. Now, now we're gonna have a mess. One thing I have to do here is I have, since I have no rings in here, I need to seal the piston to the bore. And how, how I do it is take just some wheel bearing grease and I'll smear it into that corner. And the amount of volume that it takes up is very negligible. All right, now if you have a piston shaped like ours where it's a dish or even a flat top, you wouldn't necessarily have to put it in the bore and do all that. You could take your plate, set it on here, put your fluid in there and measure it that way. But if you have a dome piston, of course that's not going to work. So this method always works. This method works sometimes. Okay, now with all of our numbers, the whole point of this, and this is my rockauto.com tip of the day, is just verify the parts you have are what you want. So for instance, verify that the dome you have and what you ordered is correct, or in this case, a dish. And of course, verify your deck height, and here's why. So now when we go through our numbers, we set our theoretical deck height based on what deck height stroke, I should say, what our theoretical deck clearance, or how far the piston is down in the hole at top dead center, should have been about 25 thousandths, 26 thousandths, based on deck numbers from the factory. Reality is, our deck height measures at 32 thousandths, so 5 thousandths more, doesn't sound like a lot, but it does add up. Okay, so taking all of our numbers that we gathered, um, they're like this. So our chamber volume is 59 cc, 
converting all of our inch dimensions over to CC. We have a 27 and a half um, dish in our piston. Our gasket at 50 thousandths crush is at 10.29 CC. Our deck height at 32 is at 6.28. And all that adds up to 103.07. And then our cylinder volume is 772.32. Dividing all that and adding everything together as you're supposed to, you come out with a compression ratio of 8.54. Similar to our Buick, but we want to be better than the Buick. So what do we do? We got to change something. Real simple, we can change the gasket thickness, go from 50 to 27 thousandths. That'll, gain, that'll put us closer to the stock ratio, which is 8.8, .8. that gets us about 8.9. So we grained a tenth, not bad, but we really wanna take advantage of our stroke and, and the extra fuel and everything that we're gonna to add to this. So we're gonna to try to go a little bit higher. We wanna get between nine and nine and a half. If I take my deck height, shave this off, take 20 thousandths off of it, puts me at a, put, puts the piston 12, that will put the piston 12 thousandths in the hole and that will give us a 9.25 uh, compression ratio, a whole lot better. So with that said, that's where we're gonna head. Unfortunately, we're all painted, but it'll be okay. It'll uh, skim right off, clean up pretty good without damaging our paint. And yes, Mikey will give me a funny look when I bring it back, but that's neither here nor there. Here nor there. Now, Mr. Phillips class at Squim High School, it is time to get your butts out of the seat and get to work. See you guys later.